Um, we're starting a new series today, um, and it's inspired by a book called Revival Ready. Um, and, and I've been in church, like many of you, for a long time, and revival's always around the corner, in it? It's coming soon, you know, and, I'm, you know, and, uh, and we've heard the revival stories uh, since I've been in church. I've been in church since minus nine months. My mother was coming to church with me. Uh, but I, I've heard it. I've, I've tasted it. Um, I, it's important uh, for us. It's a part of God's family and, and be a part of partnering with him to build his kingdom. Uh, I've, I've read stories uh, about the revivals and renewals around the world. I've watched transformations videos. Do you remember them in the 80s, 90s, was it? I, I was in meetings uh, when what was called Toronto Blessing and Pensacola Revival meetings blew around the church globally. I've been inspired by the times that uh, churches have become packed capacity and and you know people who have recognized their need of god and their sinfulness before god have been in the streets kneeling down uh, asking for his mercy and forgiveness repenting for the stuff they've done in their lives times when whole communities have been transformed not just the people but even the stuff they grow in you know, even the, even the fruit, even the, the vegetables have become an abundant harvest for them because they've aligned themselves, they've woken up to who God is and what he's able to do. The amazing times when the Holy Spirit has intervened in amazing power, not just for you and me to spot, but for everybody else to see as well in our churches, in our communities, in our places we do life. There was a guy called George Campbell Morgan. He was a 20th century preacher and an author. And he said this, we cannot organize revival. As much as I want it, as much as you ask for it and plead for it, as much as you put the right program on at the right day, no matter how much we come to church at quarter past eight on a Sunday morning for encounter moments, as brilliant as they are, and I think as necessary as they are for us, we cannot organize it. We cannot bend God's ear or twist his arm to do anything we want when we want. But we can set our sails to catch the wind from heaven when God chooses to blow upon his people once again. Have you got your sails up? You see, as a follower, as a, a follower of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus, that's exactly what I want to make sure I'm doing. As a pastor, I really want to encourage you, church, to do the same. Awake, align, advance, as Chris mentioned just a few moments ago. But you see, the problem with you and me, I've found over the years, is that we have a tendency to drift. We don't catch the right winds. Time and time again, we can go around in a kind of a circle in the way that we relate to God, in the way that we read the Old Testament, we look at history, and you can see, can't you, that we have a habit. Society has a habit of going around in circles, in forgetting God, in needing God, in forgetting God, in needing God, in forgetting God. And you can see it all through history. We try and be self-sufficient. We end up broken. We acknowledge our need of God. We worship him, finally put him in the right place. Take away all the idols that Gordon talked about last time, uh, last week, and, and then we lose it again. We get distracted, we drift. But you know, even when we are not faithful, the Bible tells us that He remains faithful. He's still on plan. And He, inquir- he asks us to align our lives to His plan, to His purpose. I pray that, folks, as we start this new year over, our hearts echo the desire of people like Habakkuk. Habakkuk 3.2, he says, look, I've heard of your fame, God. I've, heard, I've read the papers. I've heard the stories. I remember all the, the things that my grandparents said and all of that. I've heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, God. Uh, repeat them again in our day. In our time, make them known. In your wrath, remember mercy. Folks, I pray that the Spirit would whet your appetite afresh, that faith would rise in your heart, that God could do this again, that God could do something in our time, that God could make something happen that would cause us to realign, to wake up and advance, and just to go for it with him. That we would see God moving power in and through our lives, our everyday, ordinary 
life. So I pray that you and me would realize again that, that uh, as we gather again on Sundays uh, and, and through the week in our personal private devotion and study, that we would be setting our sails to catch the wind of heaven. Not just going through the motion, but setting our sails. Two weeks ago, it was New Year's Eve. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, it was New Year's Eve. Ready or not, 2023 was here. There was no stopping it, was there? I, I, I go out and I throw the ball for Harry Dog. He's a cheeky rascal. He was one this week. He's, I don't know whether he's grown up or not. I think we're in the teenage stage. But I find myself trying to get his attention and asking him, ready? Ready? And I'm there with me throw. Are you ready? Ready? And I've got his attention for a moment. Hundreds of times a day. Ready? Ready? Forget Harry Dog. Let me ask you, are you ready? Ready? I'm not going to throw you a ball. Are you ready? See, I don't think we'll ever be ready enough. We'll never be wise enough. We'll never be able enough to totally be ready for what God has in his hands for us. Talk to people who've experienced revival and renewal personally. They'll tell you that God, when God moves, you just have to run. Programs plans for the afternoon don't matter anymore. <laughs> There's a sense that they become secondary and all the things that have been really important to us that we've made really important don't matter as much as just running with the things of God. You sense his holiness in a new way. You, your heart desires change. You get your feet running in God really quick. And my prayer for you and me as his followers for our church community is that we are more ready, more ready today than we were yesterday. More hungry today than we were yesterday. More ready for what God is about to do in us and through us for his kingdom than we have ever been. Now, for some of us, it may mean bigger changes than we would expect. For others of us, in the middle of our day, it will be a different sense of God and his holiness, a different awareness, a different awake to who he is and what he wants to do in that moment. I rang Worcestershire Council. It could have been any council. All of the councils are available. Um, but I rang the council in the week, and I'm telling you, I am glad it is easier to talk to God. I really am. I am so glad. And, and you know what? I, I tried, eventually, I tried to end the call. Even my phone got fed up, I think. I tried to end the call, but my phone got stuck. It got stuck on a repeat. I couldn't do anything. The screen went black. I couldn't reset it. I couldn't do a thing. I thought then, well, maybe I'm just going to have to wait for the battery to die. It was 9.30 in the morning. I charged my battery overnight. It was going to be a long day, I tell you, because, because there was this information thing at the end of the call that was a woman who kept saying on the speaker of my phone, were you happy with the way the call was handled today by your advisor? And she was just on repeat. So for about 50 minutes in my kitchen, were you happy with the way the call was handled by the advisor? She hadn't got a clue that I didn't want to listen to her or I couldn't do it. The repetition started to drive me nuts. And eventually, my phone redid something and it was all okay. Now, in, in the first two weeks of 2023, if, if it feels like the same old, same old folks, if the diet is already a thing of the past and your New Year resolutions are in tatters already, if it seems no different to any other year to you, know this, God is not on repeat. Hear that? God doesn't do repeats. He does things new. He's a creative God who does things fresh. There may be strands that we can learn from and pull from and, and see a, a, a similarity, but he does nothing on repeat. He's not, a, he's not Dave, you know, he's not that channel, everything's a repeat in it. He's not on repeat. Child of God, you don't have to be on repeat either. And if you've already decided how the problem, how the day, how the year is going to pan out, if you've already said in your mind, nothing's ever going to change, it's just going to be another year like yes, last year, I bet. I, I'm never going to get through this. If you've already decided that it's all right for everyone else, but you've never been so lucky, 
Can I encourage you to press the pause button in your head for just a moment? Stop the repeats. I think it was Einstein who said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And if you're resistant to new ideas or if you've got a little bit stuck in comfort and, and your new opportunities aren't really something that you're grasping hold of, then can I encourage you to just open your mind to the possibilities of big or small change just for a moment because God is always on the move. Whether you've sat down or not, he's always on the move and he invites you to catch a hold of what he wants to do in and through you for the coming season. You know, you don't have to go nuts. You don't have to be wadded to try something new, do you? Something different, something fresh. You don't have to put up with the repeats. God's not on repeat. He's doing something new. He's doing something fresh. I've gotten good at talking myself out of doing things. Um, I'm brilliant at talking myself out of doing things like the washing up. I'm brilliant at talking myself out of cleaning the house. But, you know, I can, I can slowly become um, someone who's lost confidence. I can quickly, over time, lose confidence to take the new opportunities and to try new things. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. I don't know. When I was in my 20s, 30s, I said yes to everything virtually. Not everything, but a lot of things. Certainly a lot more things I said yes to. I had a go. I'm not so keen on having a go anymore. I can lose confidence to take the opportunities to do or to go somewhere different. We get the opportunity, we get an evening, we get a few quid in cash, and we think, oh, let's go somewhere for, for a meal. I like what John and Lindsay do. They seem to know every pub and every eating house in the whole of Birmingham district, don't you? And, and black country, obviously. You just seem to, if you want to know anywhere to go for a meal, it's almost like they've got their own trip advisor going on. <laughs> what we do is we go to the mayor and Colt every time. We just keep going back to what we know. And, and they were shot recently for a rebound vamp, right? It saved us going anywhere new because we've gone back there and it's all changed. But, but we just go back to what we know. There are other places we could try. Simple stuff, innit, folks? And yet for, another, for whatever reason, we don't go. And this year we're determined to do different things. We're trying to schedule it in. Simple things. To just try something new. So I've signed Mark up for bungee jumping next Saturday afternoon. No, I haven't. We're determined to try something new. COVID, things like um, home working, I think is robbing us of our confidences to a degree. But you know, um, you don't have to feel confident to be confident. You don't have to feel it to be confident. More often than not, it's about being confident in who God is than who I am. It's in being confident in who God says I am rather than who I think or have convinced I am. The adventure he calls us to in life as his followers isn't here to intimidate us, folks. It's here to inspire you. It's here to invigorate you. You know, God loves variety. If he didn't, he wouldn't have created us like, would he? We'd have all been looking like Alan this afternoon, you know? We would all be the same as each other. He's a God of variety. He didn't create you and me to get stuck on a life level of, of one or another kind. There are new opportunities, new relationships, new favor in his hands for you and me. He longs to breathe new energy. Who'd like a bit of that? Uh, vitality, freshness into our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and day-to-day -day activities and programs. We need to be uh, initiating some of that with him. But the way you, and, uh, you may see it after recent weeks or recent years, it might sometimes feel that the odds are against you. You might be, accepted to th uh, ex be tempted to think, well, that's just the way it is. I'll never make it. They'll never change. It's just the way I am. The odds may against you, be against you, folks. But at the start of this year, know again that the most high God is not against you. He is with you. In fact, he's for you. He's for you. He loves you. He wants the best for you. And stuck and fearful isn't on his agenda for you. There are new seasons ahead of you. 
Seasons are meant to change. Thank God. I'm glad we have four because I'm getting sick of this one. Are you? Cold, wet weather, honestly. Seasons are meant to change. The season you are in, remind yourself it's not going to last forever. This isn't it. It's a relief to hear that again today, isn't it? But you don't have to sit down in that season either. God said this to the people of Israel back in the day, and he says it again to you and me this morning. Generation after generation, he says, but no, this is what the Lord God says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I've summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing, a fresh thing. Now it springs up. Do you not get it? Do you not see it? Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You know, the children of Israel had had their struggles. They'd been treated unfairly. They'd made their mistakes. They'd brought a lot of trouble on themselves, to be honest. Does that remind you of anybody? Not as dissimilar to you and me, perhaps today. They'd also had this choice to sit in self-pity and discouragement. But they hear God's promise again to them. Forget the former things. Don't dwell in the past. You know, folks, we are all products of our past. Denying it isn't what God's saying here. He's saying don't get stuck because of it. Don't get stuck because of what has been done. Don't get stuck or on repeat. Your past doesn't have to bind you. It doesn't have to break you, does it? You can allow it to if you want. You can get stuck in it if you want. But if we're living through a rear view mirror, if we're dwelling in the past, if we're focused on who hurt us, what they did, what wasn't fair, if we're blaming today on the start that we had and who brought us up or why they walked away in our marriage or relationship or whatever, why we didn't get the job, why we didn't get the promotion, then there's every chance we're going to miss what's next. You've all been in a car. I don't need to insult your intelligence on that. Uh, you know, there's a big, there's a reason, a big reason why my windscreen is this big. And there's a reason why my rear view mirror is this big. In fact, I can't remember whether I've got one now. Yes, I have. I do use it occasionally. Uh, but, but my rear view mirror is this big. My windscreen is this big. The reason is this. I need to see what is coming ahead of me more than what I need to do about what I've left behind. Now, if you're Mary, you've left a lot behind because you probably hit three cars on Birchley Island. You look at a car next time she comes to church. There's more dents in that car than all our cars combined. Don't miss what's ahead of you. Don't let the hurts, the bad breaks, the times you were taken advantage of sour the rest of your life or the relationships you are now in causing you to live with a chip on your shoulder. You know, us women, sometimes we're good at bringing up the past, aren't we? We throw it whenever we feel it, you know, and, and we need to put it down. We need to put it down. Gentlemen, we're sorry about that. <laughs> we need to choose to, live, uh, to stop living life on repeat. God knows how to sort it. God knows how to deal with it. He knows what will be done about it, and he will vindicate you. You don't have to worry about that. Let me encourage you to stop thinking about the person who hurt you. Because the more you think about the injustice, the more you allow them to unknowingly keep hurting you. Does that make sense? Give it to God. Again. 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 He saw what they did. He saw your tears. He saw your heartache. And the Bible promises there's beauty for ashes beauty for ashes but you have to let go of the ashes for the beauty to come get prayer get counseling where you you are going is what matters not where you've been you see god knows how to make rivers in life's dry and in your desert he knows how he's going to bring your you out of your struggle out of addiction out of depression whatever it is 
that you're struggling with, with. Stick with him this year. Keep obedient in the little things. Start believing he can even for you. Because I can pray for other people believing he can for them. And often I don't believe he can do it for me. Have you felt like that as well? Just because you can't see it yet doesn't mean God's not up to something. Just because I can't see a way forward in certain aspects of stuff that I've got on my plate at the moment doesn't mean God hasn't got my plate and can't sort out what's coming. How many times have you heard someone cynically say, I'll believe it when I see it? Huh? How many times I believe that when I see it? It's usually about the kids, isn't it? I believe that when I see it. So and so is coming this afternoon, I believe that when I see it. Well, in Isaiah's prophecy, God challenges the people of Israel and us today as church to see it before you see it. Do you hear me? See it before you see it. God longs for you to develop your spiritual eyes, living close to him so that we get to see what others might miss. You and I are invited into a, a different level of living with God, a spiritual level of living to see what others don't see. And as leaders, um, we had an away day in September together, just time to seek God's heart together. And it was the, the same day that King Charles ascended to the throne. And uh, as we prayed together, we really sensed that, that God was, uh, with, that God was um, bringing something new and, and new and fresh spaces, I think, we, that we wanted to make new and fresh spaces spaces in our personal lives to him and in our church life for him that he longed for us as, ch as a church to step into new and fresh spaces that the door was open we sensed that the door was open for us to choose to step into the new and into the fresh uh, a spiritual era personally and as a church and as a nation that as a church we needed to constantly be preparing for change to make room, to, um, I think the word somebody said, it might have been Simon, to get used to different. If you've watched The Chosen, Jesus says that a lot. Get used to different. Get used to different, church. Because God is not on repeat. He's always doing something fresh, different. That we would be known as a, uh, a, ch a place of sanctuary, a place of stability, a safe place, safe hands, safe people, for the community and a, and a world on the brink. Folks, we can't make God do anything. We can't make God happen. But we can align our hearts. We can set our sails. We can bow our hearts. We can humble ourselves. And as we love and as we grow and as we serve together this year, I pray that our prayer would be simply this, Holy Spirit, would you help us to see what you see? Help us to feel what you feel. You see, the promise of Isaiah 43, 19 is that Jesus will make a road through the rubbish, through the stress, through the problem, through the wasteland, through the desert, dry places of our lives, and he will cause freshness, living waters to flow. We're believing that we will see impossible situations turned around, are you? Because I've been doing this a long time, folks, and I, my, my, I, I get a bit blunt, you know? Well, I can be blunt, but, you know, I'm not so sharp in my, in my, my Christian life, and I, I, think I get used to things. But we're praying that impossible situations will be turned around, that you and I, the Church of Jesus, will begin to align ourselves and begin to take him at his word and live lives that are healthy and strong and devoted to Jesus and full of his love and grace and miracle working power. Oh. We're spiritually seeing ordinary Christians, folks like you and me, leading our neighbours and colleagues to Christ. That's what we're seeing before we see it. Are you with me? Praying for people seeing them healed miraculously. We're seeing disciples grown. We're seeing spirit filled and churches planted to cope with the harvest the spirit longs to bring for his kingdom. Can you see it? Can you see it? Dare you see it? Dare you open your eyes to believe it? 
that God invites you and me to the adventure to step through that open door from death and despair, from dwelling in the past and into new, fresh life, different things. Jesus, help us to see what you see and feel what you feel. So as church, as we, we take a moment to reflect, we're going to take communion together and we're just going to spend a little bit of time, just five minutes or so. And what we're going to do over the course of this coming season is we're going to leave you with just a couple of questions to think about. And what we'll do is we'll send them out on the WhatsApp on a Sunday afternoon, Monday morning, for you just to take through your week and to just to press into simple questions that will just cause you to perhaps think about this throughout the week rather than just go home and drop it. Just need you to put perhaps legs on what you're hearing. So we're going to, just two questions that we're going to take into communion for the next few moments. What is Jesus revealing to you today? What's he nudging you personally about? Simply pray and ask him for a bit more clarity over the coming days so that you can embrace those things that he's, he's dropping in your heart, highlighting with a yellow, big yellow highlighter pen to you, stuff that you're already doing that he just wants to bring some freshness into, maybe. Maybe there are things that you need to identify in your life that you're resistant to change, that you're holding on to those things for grim death, as they were. And you just may need to say, God, I release those things to you again. I surrender those people, those situations, that, that job, that whatever it is. I just release that to you. Have your way in that, God. Maybe an illness that you carry. Your body. Father, heal me. Help me to, you know, we can hang on to heal, illness sometimes. Release, I release that to you. Do what you, let your will be done in my life, Jesus, again. Maybe that you just need to stop pressing the repeat button in your mind and free those people that are involved and stop the repetition of hurt and fail and free yourself up and them up too and step in to new and fresh things maybe you've just got a bit battered down and you've been resigned to to just thinking well it's always going to be this way and it's going to work out this way and you've almost written the book the ending of the book yourself and God says no I, I write the next chapter for you just trust me with that so let's just take a moment take communion whenever you want to over the next couple of minutes folks but just respond and just reflect on what the Holy Spirit may be just saying to us. Where do we need some freshness? Where do we need to stand up in our faith again? May we just remind ourselves that tough times often bring harvest times. Revival always comes on the back of a tough time. Renewal. God moves. He uses it and brings freshness harvest, hope again. Jesus, help us to set our sails. Help us to catch the wind of your spirit for this coming season in our lives. Personally and as a church, we pray. We've heard of your deeds. We stand in awe of you renew them in our day may we be men and women who know your strength for today and live in your bright hope for tomorrow Lord we don't want to be moulded into the patterns of this world we want to be shaped by your spirit may we see what he sees feel what he feels May we trust you again to make a way where there seems to be no way. And we feel cornered, where we feel stuck. Lord, we thank you for your reminder that 
you know the way forward. You know the way out. You know the way through. <laughs>